Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm Lydia and today I am so excited to finally show you after many requests how to pattern draft in Illustrator. I actually create all my patterns on Illustrator. I sell my patterns on Etsy so you can check that out. If you're interested in creating patterns in a fuss-free way then you've come to the right place. Today I'm going to show you keyboard shortcuts, manipulating pattern blocks, creating free shapes like a pocket bag, walking your pattern, adding seam allowance, and printing on your home printer. I'm actually going to pattern draft a whole dress and walk you through the entire process. Any of you have any tips on how I'm doing things a more efficient way, please drop a comment below. I always want to be more efficient with my pattern drafting. And if any of you have any questions about what I'm doing, drop a comment below. So without further ado, let's get started. This is a dress that I'm going to make. Just a basic kind of 60s style dress. We're gonna do a Peter Pan collar. We're gonna do side barts. Side barts? We're gonna do side darts, be fitted to the waist, and then it's going to have a gathered skirt. And then it's gonna have just gathered little sleeves with a cuff. That's what we're going to make. Kind of like a schoolgirl dress. So we need a collar piece, front and back bodice with a side dart back bodice, but it's just gonna have a waist dart. Let's do the sleeve. So it's gonna be a big gathered sleeves. It's gonna be like, sort of like this. And we're gonna have the cuff and we're gonna have the skirt. Front's gonna be one piece and the back's gonna be two pieces. Okay, so that's basically what we need to do. Start by opening Illustrator and create a new project. I like to work on a 60 by 60 inch artboard. It gives me lots of room and it's a good size for this dress. Then I'm dragging in my blocks from my saved file. I'll have this file linked below for a free download. It's a size 10 bodice and sleeve block and you can use it to practice with. I'll also include the print template and the file we create today. I would just love if you shared what you're working on with me on Instagram. Just tag me at Lydia Naomi Studio and I would love to see what you're creating. Also, thank you to Anya Kotar for sharing your music with us. I'm playing Tuscany in the background. Okay, here are my bodice and sleeve blocks. Um, we are going to first start by creating a new layer. We're going to select this little line area here and duplicate blocks. That's what I call my first layer. I'm gonna rename my second layer one and change the color to red. So there we have it. And then I'm going to lock blocks and I could turn it off, but let's just leave it on for now. First thing I want to do is change the neckline. The neckline is currently like right here. So we're going to change this neckline. So I'm taking my line segment. I'm copying this line. So I'm basically just tracing this line. And then I'm going to delete that. Then I just click at the shoulder neck point and this box pops up. It has the angle of the last line I just created. So I'm just going to change the value to an inch. I'm going to do this many times in this tutorial, but I notice that I never tell you that I'm clicking again. So just remember that when I'm using the line segment tool and a box pops up, it's because I just clicked where I want my new line to start and I'm going to be adding a new value in the box that pops up. So it's going to follow the angle of the shoulder line. Now what I'm going to do is with my direct selection, I'm going to select the whole block and I'm going to drag this to that new little line and it kind of like just stops there like that. That I know that it's there. And then here, since it's just going 90 degrees, I'm going to hit Command K or Control K. I'm working on a Mac, so it's Command K. I have my preferences box pop up and I'm going to type in the keyboard increment. I wanna lower the front by one inch, so actually it's already on an inch. So now I'm going to select this point with my direct, direct selection tool and use my arrow key to move it down an inch. Then 
this is the angle line I'm going to press shift so that I keep it at a 90 degree angle and pull it out to where I want it if I hide my block layer you'll see my new neckline with that guideline which I can delete and yeah so that's what we have for the front let's do the same for the back so there's my new neckline okay let's pay attention to the front bodice I want a side dart instead of a waist dart I'm going to establish where I want my new dart to open along here um, I'm just gonna pick a spot I'd say about three inches down from here so I'm going to use my line segment tool, which is the backward slash button. Go copy this line and then get three inches down on this angle. Actually, I want to do four inches. Yeah, that's more like it. And I am going to choose my selection tool, select this whole area, my cut tool. I'm just hovering over to find that point and I'm going to cut there. Get rid of this guideline. Okay, now we have this piece and this piece and we can rotate this closed. So I'm going to select the rotate tool or R for short. First, I have to have the thing that I want to Rotate selected with my selection tool. Then I click the rotate button, which is R for short. I click on the bus point because we always um, rotate a dart from the bus point. And then I'm just gonna drag this closed. So what I'm going to do is take my pen tool, connect here, stop at the bus point, and then connect back. Here. Then I'm going to take my direct selection tool and just delete this line. And I'm going to close this by joining it. So I'm selecting it with my direct selection, those two points, and Command J to join it. Then it's not a separate piece anymore. So there we have our side dart, but we need to add the dart bulk for when we fold it. And we don't want the dart to end at the bus point. So let's deal with this. I'm taking my line segment tool, which is the backward slash button, and connecting these lines. Then I delete that. And then this can do simple math, so I divide this forward slash button, divide it by two, because I need to find the halfway mark between these, between the dart legs. And then I'm going to draw with my line segment tool, shortcut, forward, backward slash, and draw a line from the bus point to this center point get rid of this. I'm going to extend extend this line by using my direct selection tool and making sure it's it turns fuchsia as I am extending it otherwise I'm doing it at a different angle but I want to keep it at the same angle. Just going to extend it quite a bit. Alright now I'm going to measure along this line we want our dart to end an inch away from the bus point so i'm going to take my line segment tool backward slash and copy this line and then type in one inch it's going to go at the same angle now i'm going to take my direct selection tool select the dart select the point of the dart and move it back to my guideline the end of my guideline so there I have it delete that guideline so that's my new dart end now what I'm going to do is 
we want the dart bulk to fold down. So it's going to fold behind this line here. So what I'm going to do is select this line with my direct selection tool, copy and paste. So I do Command C or Control C, Command C and then Command F and that will copy the line right in front. If you Command V, it will put it somewhere else. Um, so I got Command F and now I'm going to select this line and I'm going to select the reflect tool which is shortcut O and with this line selected I'm going to reflect it along this line here so I'm going to select this point and the end of the point and then it just reflected on that angle then I'm going to take my cut tool or, or C for short and I'm going to cut this line where it intersects with our center dart line and delete that portion. Then I'm going to copy this line here and then I'm going to also reflect this one, shortcut O. And this has to be selected. And then I'm just going to reflect it along this line. So I'm going to click the end of this point and the end of the dart point. And we have a dart bulk. I don't know, maybe I'll leave this center line, but I'm gonna move it out of the way for a second. So Command K, I have my keyboard increment at two inches. So I just select this, move it out of the way. I just moved it down with the arrow key and then I'm going to direct selection. So I have my white arrow, select these two points, which are separate, and I'm going to command J to join them. Now I want to join this to the entire body. So I'm going to actually select the entire body with my selection tool, select the cut tool to cut it. So C and cut it here and here. Select my dart legs, move them out of the way, just using my arrow key with my increment at two inches, and I'm going to join these lines. See how they're separate from this body. So I'm just gonna join them together like so. Ooh, gotta move this back, that back to the center. Join, then select this again and move it back. So that's, these are just guidelines now. Okay, great work. Yay! Now, let's do the sleeve first. I wanna shorten it first. So how long do I want my sleeve? Take a measuring tape and just measure from the top. I wanted to end up my bicep, so eight inches. So eight inches minus the two inch cuff. I'm gonna make my straight sleeve six inches. So to get to that, I'm just taking my line segment tool, going from the center top and drawing down six inches. Six inches, so that's how short I want it. Whoa, that's really short. I'll just do seven. <laughs> With my direct selection tool, select the bottom line and holding shift to keep it in place and line it up with that. So there we go. Move up the labeling. This is just the grain line, but I think that we know the grain line, where the grain line is. Before I go any further, I think I've done enough on this first layer, so I'm gonna create another layer. So I'm just gonna duplicate what I've done here, double click on it to rename it to, get a new color, magenta. Now I'm gonna lock one, because we don't want anything to change on that, because we wanna keep our progress there. So let's continue with the straight sleeve here. Now what I wanna do is slash and spread because we're going to add fullness to the sleeve to the top and bottom. So this is actually a very easy thing. Um, basically what you can do is you can 
with your direct selection tool, select the bottom line, copy and paste it. Control C, Control F, or Command C, Command F. I've got that down. Now you can go to this little eye info and it will show you the width or the length of that line. Let's just say it's 12 and three quarters, so 12.75. I'm going to create a vertical line with my line tool just in line with the edge here and then I'm going to just do a quick calculation 12.75 divided by 5 we'll, we'll make this into five sections Point five is going to be my keyboard increment then I'm going to take my selection tool shortcut V select this line command C command F that's copying it and I'm going to move it 2.5 I'm going to do that again and again and just move it that 2.5 over so there we've got our got our five sections I'll delete this one now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything here except for the labeling I don't want the labeling and then we're gonna go to the Pathfinder button on the side here you can find it in your window um, and find Pathfinder it's right here um, and I'm going to choose the divide button and what it's done is it's sectioned it off into pieces but it's grouped right now so I've just selected it now I'm going to right click and I'm going to ungroup it so now we have separate little pieces here I want to spread this um, I'm going to spread it in between each piece two inches, so I'm going to change my keyboard increment. So what do we do to do that? Command K or Control K. Select these two sides and then use with my selection tool and use the arrow key to move it over two inches. Then I'm going to select this panel, move it over two inches. I'm going to leave the center one because I want it stationary and I want it lining up with our original block. See what I'm saying? And I'm going to select just this and move that over. Then just the one, move that over. So that's our puffed sleeve. I'm going to move on to the other things I have to do for the bodice in this layer because we're going to create another layer for the next step. So what I need to do now is create our Peter Pan collar. So what I'm going to do is copy my back bodice and then I'm going to move it over here. And then I'm going to line up the shoulder line with this shoulder line, select it at the anchor with my selection tool and I'm going to line it up with the neckline of my front bodice. So this is the neckline of the back bodice, this is the neckline of the front bodice. We want those neck and shoulder points lining up there. Now I'm going to take my rotate tool, which is the R, and select that point. Then I'm going to rotate this around to match with the shoulder armhole point. And there we have it. We have our back matched with our front. So to draft my Peter Pan collar, I'm going to probably make a three inch. I'm actually gonna do two inches. Copy this angle two inches. Copy the shoulder angle. Delete it two inches. At the front, two inches. Just take my pen tool and basically connect these lines, give it a nice right angle from the center front. I'm going to use my cut tool to get rid of this center front guideline. Take my pen tool, start from the center front neck, 
and then I'm going to place the other point here and then drag it to create oh I don't really need the circle use the cut tool where I had ended that sh that curved shape and just delete that guideline and then get my direct selection it's separate these are separate right now so I'm going to select those two points then command J or control J to join them and I think I'm gonna shape this a little bit better by moving this out oh great I'm going to delete that line by using the minus button it's going to delete this anchor and then I'm going to direct select this tool to create a nice curve using the converted selected anchor points to smooth so that's what I'm going to use and then I can use my direct selection tool to smooth this out a little better what you can do to see how it's going to look on the person is just selection tool selection shift and select the collar as well copy and paste so command C command F reflect tool to reflect it along this line so select O and then go along this line and it will reflect it like that you can see how it looks another way to reflect would be to select whatever you want to reflect you can just right click transform reflect and then it will reflect it because there's a preview on and you can copy and you can select this everything selected right now use your shift to keep it in line and then wait till it gets that intersect line and there you have it so that's two ways to reflect get that rid of that okay so our collar is basically done but to complete the collar we want to put a little notch where the sh where it lines up at the shoulder so I'm going to use my line segment tool copy this line because I like to make half inch seam allowances I like my notches to be a quarter half that so a quarter inch 0.25 then all I need to do is I'm going to move this over five inches I just went into my preferences box which is command K changed my keyboard increment to five inches move this over move this over too we need to copy this neckline so i'm going to take the direct selection tool or a for short select these lines control or command c command f that's copy and then just move this over the same increment by using the arrow tool then these are separate all separate lines I want them to be one complete path so I'm just gonna select the separate points and command J or that's join you can also right-click and join but I like to use command J okay now we're ready to continue the sleeve duplicate this layer to trace out the sleeve with my pen tool I don't know why I selected this here but it's shortcut is P make sure I'm on here and I'm just going to kind of create points I'm going to follow this and then I'm going to go up a little higher and then drag this line so that it's a 90 degree angle go down here across and then close it at this point we could walk the sleeve along the bodice i'm just grouping it with that notch that center notch and then i'm going to copy this line command c command f sorry not the line this whole piece I'm gonna drag it over here this side is the front of my sleeve this side is the back of my sleeve so to line it up with the sleeve properly I'm just going to reflect it I right click to transform reflect I'm selecting this point with my selection tool and lining it up it will snap to this point here and then I'm going to select my rotate tool this sleeve should be selected with your selection tool select this point for the rotate point 
and then just move it so that it snaps to the sleeve point and then I add another rotate dot there and move it rotate dot there okay this is where I want my actually let's rotate a little bit more so that it's like yes now this is where I want my notch on the sleeve so I'm actually just gonna select this notch and I'm going to copy it so command C command F and then with that still selected um, I'm going to select my sleeve make sure we're selecting our sleeve I'm gonna shift and select so that they're both selected and I'm gonna group and then that is my new um, notch for my front sleeve now I'm going to move line up the back to the back here and I'm going to repeat the process so rotate tool and now I just want to match the sleeve back up with the original first I'm going to just select it and reflect it so right click transform reflect and then I'm going to select this point with my selection tool and snap it to this point here. There we go. And then I'm going to select my rotate tool, select that point where it's lined up and then just match it back and see it's saying intersect. So I know it all lines up. I'm going to select this again. I'm gonna move it up with my keyboard increment. I think it's set to five and I'm going to just delete the old trace area. And that's our sleeve. Now, to create the cuff and skirt is pretty simple. You're just creating rectangles. You just need to make sure that the dimensions are proper. So I'm going to take my rectangle tool, which shortcut is M. You'll see it right here. And I'm just gonna click below here because the, um, dimension box is going to come up. So I said 13 inches in width by four inches height. And this is not including seam allowance because we're gonna add seam allowance later. And now let's do the skirt. We could also add pockets. That's not too hard to do. Just gonna be a side opening pocket. So I want a six by 10 rectangle to start. So take my rectangle tool, which is shortcut M, clicking and putting in my dimensions, six by 10. So there we go. But I don't just want a square pocket. So I'm gonna round this area out at the bottom. I'm gonna make a circle. That is the width of six inches and the height of six inches. Cut the edge of this circle with my cut tool, which is C, and just with my selection tool, get rid of this. And then I'm gonna select my rectangle, select my cut, and I'm going to cut it at the same area that I cut the circle and just get rid of that. Take my direct selection tool and join these areas. So there's my pocket and then I'm just going to move this back a little bit. Oops. Move this back just an inch. We don't need it to be that wide at the top. So moving it back an inch. I can smooth out this line by selecting this point and selecting the convert selected anchor points to smooth um, tool and then it just smoothed it out nicely and then uh, I'm not really liking this area so I'm going to just move this over one inch by selecting these two points and moving it over an inch 
And then I'm going to take this handle and just move it so that it looks like this. This is kind of a big pocket, but Oh, my husband brought me some toast with bread that he made. <laughs> Artisanal bread. Our pattern is done. All we have to do now is add seam allowance and drag it over to print. Okay, first on this layer, I'm gonna get rid of everything I don't need. So I'm gonna get rid of all of my guides they're already saved on the other layers, so I'm just going to delete them. With everything done, let's just duplicate this layer again. Block the old layer, and then I'm going to label this seam allowance. Ungroup everything by selecting it, right clicking, ungroup. I might have to do it a couple times for this. Now I just want to select the outward, outside shape of everything by using my selection tool, selecting the outward shape of everything and holding down shift so that they all stay selected. Then to create our seam allowance, you can decide whatever seam allowance you want. Okay, so I'm going to the object up here. I am going to path, offset path. And then we can choose how much we want to offset it. So how much seam allowance do you want? I want half an inch, so 0.5. That's okay. And there I have added half an inch. Um, at this point, you would want to move your notches to the outer area, selecting it with my selection tool and then using shift to keep it in the same place. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my template for that I created and I will just, I'll link this below for you as a free download that you can use. Um, so I have like tons of pages in here. So what I would do is I would just select all of this, select one of them and just drag it over here and I put it on the labeling tab. I have a layer for every size. I'm gonna put it on the small layer. And then I just would, mm, well first you need to make sure everything is grouped so that you don't lose any notches in the process. Okay, and then you just drag everything to fit. I really don't think it's necessary to cut out these rectangles. You can just look at the outer edge and find the dimensions and then cut out your own piece. I think it's not worth the paper. That's basically it. Then I can go ahead and print just page one to 14 file, print, US letter, range, but page one to 14. But I'm just gonna pay, print two pages because I don't really need to print all of this. <laughs> If you want to know how my patterns go together, you can just head over to this video. It'll show you how how to cut this up and paste it together. It's very easy. So it prints like this. That's page one, page two. So it would go like this. And you would cut off those edges and then line these lines up exactly. So yeah, that's a wrap. I hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoyed. Leave me a comment below, like this video if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you wanna see more. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.